Hi, I'm Shauna Laurie and I love cats and dogs. We call them our best friends and for many of us they are, but sadly for Raider here, she was abandoned by her owners. Her story is one of many that reflects the serious crisis affecting dogs and cats all over the world. Millions face homelessness like Raider here. They suffer from harm, cruelty and neglect every day. Come on, Raider. That's a good girl. Come on, up you go. That's a sweetheart. We'll get you home soon, don't you worry. Now, luckily, amongst the sad stories, there's some good news about the effort being made to give cats and dogs a safer, better life. The video you're about to watch tells that story. You'll see that there's a lot being done, but there's still a lot more to do. And together, we can make a difference. Isn't that right? Yes. Give me a better life. Good girl. When it comes to the animal world, there can be little doubt that our best friends are dogs and cats. There's a unique bond between them and people. They provide love, friendship, protection, help, even work for us, and in return, ask for little. Companion animals are most often our first introduction and closest experience with animals. They act as ambassadors for all other species. Indeed, from the earliest age, pets introduce us to the concept of animal welfare and foster a humane attitude towards animals. But what should we provide for that boundless affection? How should we be caring for our best friends? The story of dogs and cats goes back far into the distant past until we find their earliest ancestors. In the case of dogs, 30 million years, and for cats, the first fossils go back even longer, 50 million years. All domesticated dogs evolved from wolves, which first appeared 300,000 years ago. It was in the Ice Age that people began to tame the wolves while pet cats all descend from a single species of wild cat that can still be found in Africa, Asia and Europe. From those early beginnings, dogs and cats soon became close allies, working with people. We learn that dogs were useful for herding sheep or protecting our property as guards. Cats, meanwhile, went from being Egyptian gods to our best means of controlling disease-ridden rats and mice whether in cities or on board ship. Indeed, the ship's cat was a popular member of the crew. These days, dogs have a wide range of useful skills we employ. Guide dogs for the blind, guard dogs, fighting crime, helping on the farm, even assisting rescue teams find trapped victims in disasters. However, this remarkable human-animal relationship is blighted by two main problems, overpopulation and cruelty. The scale of the overpopulation crisis is massive. Millions of cats and dogs end up in animal shelters every year. Six million in the United States alone, and there are similar problems in many parts of the world. That means countless pets are abandoned by people who originally thought it would be fun to have them then simply change their minds. Those dogs and cats end up as strays, dying alone. Some are rescued and taken to shelters. It's good news for the lucky ones. But the numbers are so great, shelters can't cope. In fact, about half of those that enter shelters have to be put down. That means millions of animals are euthanized every year. Globally, there are also millions of strays. This problem can and is being tackled. One of the most important ways is to have dogs and cats spayed and neutered. People can help by firstly ensuring their own pets are spayed and neutered. There are also schemes to treat stray animals for free. An added bonus is that animals that have been spayed or neutered 
can also live longer, healthier lives. Typically, they have less behavior problems, normally stay near their home, and are less likely to start fights with other animals. One positive way people can help is if they're going to have a pet, is to adopt it from a shelter. This is a great way to rescue them and provide a future for an animal that has been abandoned. The old but very important message is to remember that a pet is a lifetime commitment, not a passing whim. Lost pets are another unnecessary addition to the overpopulation problem. People should make sure their dog or cat does not get lost by giving it a collar with an identity tag. In some countries in this technological age, it's possible to have a microchip painlessly implanted in your pet with the same information in case the collar is lost. About 98% of lost cats are never reunited with their owners. Simple identity tags could often save that misery. Sadly for our best friends, we're sometimes their worst enemies. Cruelty to companion animals is all too common. For example, in the UK more than a thousand people are convicted of cruelty to dogs and cats each year. It comes in many forms, ranging from simple neglect to terrible abuse. It may be in the name of entertainment, be caused by poor breeding conditions in puppy farms, or cruel treatment associated with the human consumption for food. In Asia, dogs and cats are often eaten and in many instances cruelly treated in the belief this enhances the benefit of them as food. In a 2005 I-4 commissioned study in Vietnam, China and Korea, we discovered that more than 94% of the people surveyed were opposed to such cruelty and more than 92% felt they had a moral duty to minimize animal suffering as much as possible. There's nothing new about the ill treatment of companion animals. In the Middle Ages, cats were often branded as close friends of witches and the devil, for which they might be burned or crucified. Cruelty continues today in other forms. Fur for clothing, use in traditional medicine, dog fighting. Even those who claim to love animals can cause them harm. Far too many pets crowded into their home, or even just the wrong kind of home. That dog does not want to spend all day confined in a small flat. Tens of thousands of incidents of cruelty to companion animals are reported globally each year. That represents only a tiny percentage of the problem. Although laws do exist in many countries, new and better legislation is often required. Just as important is the need for better enforcement. Put simply, if we don't use the laws, they're useless. Legislation is crucial in providing long-term benefits to animals. I4 works internationally with governments and agencies to provide better laws and enforcement that protect dogs and cats. Probably the most important piece of animal welfare legislation in the UK for nearly a hundred years is being introduced. A number of animal organizations have been involved in the consultation process. Its most significant aspect of duty to care will mean that action can now be taken to prevent people from being cruel to animals. I4 has also taken a lead in seeking better laws in Russia, Mexico, Canada and China. So who is responsible? Well, an awful lot of us. Research gives some insight to the issue. One disturbing feature is that those children who harm animals are more likely to grow up to be violent adults who abuse people. But the future with our best friends is not hopeless. The critical and serious problems of cruelty, neglect and overpopulation can be combated. We can start caring for our best friends. Everywhere we find people caring for companion animals, such as the one-woman whirlwind of kindness that is Cora Bailey. 
Cora started caring for dogs and cats in some of the poorest townships and settlements in South Africa ten years ago. Rather than turn her back on what seemed the most hopeless of situations and the people least equipped to cope, she started CLAW. Community-led animal welfare. In disadvantaged communities, pets suffer from poverty just like their owners. In such situations, dogs and cats are particularly at risk from lack of food, neglect and abandonment. Owners love their animals as much as anyone anywhere, but cannot afford veterinary care and often travelling long distances to clinics is difficult. That's where Cora and Claw stepped in to provide veterinary and health care, tackle overpopulation, neglect through poverty and educate owners about their pets. By operating mobile clinics, it's possible to bring these services direct to the communities in most need. Now I4 is developing similar projects in other disadvantaged communities around the world, including the United States and Canada, Mexico, Dominica, East Africa, South Africa and Russia. In Moscow our mobile clinic has made a tremendous difference. So much so that now, on land donated by the city, we're planning to open a small veterinary centre that will support the mobile clinic and provide vital spay and neuter services. Already Claw has spayed and neutered more than 30,000 dogs in South Africa alone over the last 10 years. Heartwarming help can also come the other way round, from animals to people. Dogs have such a special relationship with people, they can be used to bring tremendous comfort to those who are suffering. A program called Dr. Dog was initially launched in 1991 in Hong Kong and since then has spread and helped thousands of people with visits to hospitals, disabled centres, schools, orphanages, homes for the elderly and to troubled youngsters. The doctors and their volunteer owners bring a warmth and comfort to those they visit. Evidence of the medical and psychological benefits of contact with companion animals is growing all the time. In fact, Dr. Dog provides much more than just comfort to people, as its canine ambassadors also educate the public to respect and enjoy animals. In disasters, people and animals suffer side by side. Indeed, the care of animals is often crucial to the communities, even when those people are suffering such a humanitarian crisis. Pets need to be rescued and helped for their sake, but also for the sake of their owners. IFOR's emergency relief team goes to such disasters and helps both animals and people with its work. The tsunami was one of the worst natural disasters the world has faced. I4 sent teams to Sri Lanka, India, Thailand and Indonesia where the work included vaccinating thousands of dogs and cats to prevent rabies spreading to people caught in the disaster. Spay and neuter schemes were organised because of the risk of a massive expansion of the stray animal population. Other veterinary care was also provided to injured and sick animals. Perhaps the most common way that we all come to know about people helping dogs and cats is through the local animal organisations where we live and work. At the grassroots level around the world, such groups provide shelters and other aid to companion animals. Since 1994, I4 has been giving grants to assist this vital work all around the world. To really make a big difference, we need to look at the big picture. And that requires governments taking action by creating new laws where necessary and backing legislation with enforcement. But the politicians, legislators and those who enforce the law can ultimately only do their part. The final and most important people in making a difference are us, the general public, young and old everywhere. We can fight the cruelty end the overpopulation. 
It's up to us to make sure we are the best friends to our best friends in the animal world.